Hi, I'm Hendrik Kraxler. I'm working at the Open University of the Netherlands for the Welton Institute and uh, leading that research group on open learning analytics. And within the Welton Institute, we have a couple of European projects um, that work on learning analytics. We actually do learning analytics since 10 years or something, but it wasn't called learning analytics at that time, but still we were using data to recommend stuff to students that could be peers or content. And in the past years, we have been very active on learning analytics with a couple of projects and currently running uh, the LACE project as principal investigator and having the Sheila project as well as the learning for small un learning analytics for small university projects going on um, where we use learning analytics tools, experiment with it and try to implement it in universities. Looking back over the last three years for learning analytics, it's 2016, so we're talking 2013 something. Um, we published a paper about what learning analytics is about in 2012 with the learning analytics framework, where we mapped out six critical dimensions of learning analytics. And those are um, first stakeholder needs analysis. So when we still see that's very important, you really have to talk to the teachers what they kind of information they want to see, how they want to react with it. So you really have to involve the stakeholders in that process of developing learning analytics solutions. Um, a second dimension is then the objectives of learning analytics. Actually, learning analytics is always about reflection or prediction. So either you use the data and present it back to some of the stakeholders and so they can better reflect on their own performance or how they want to do interventions if they are a teacher. Or the magic is the prediction. How will the student continue based on the knowledge we have in our data in the future? And um, if there's any pattern of maybe drop out or something, how we can intervene there and um, keep the students in a good mode in the flow of studying. The third dimension um, is about data aspects. So it's then about, or we put it into open and closed data, <coughs> but actually there's much more to say these days about um, the data aspect. So among having closed and privacy protected data sets um, from the university and open data sets you could combine, there's a lot going on on data standardization. LACE project recently published a great report about data interoperability and data standards there. And uh, we really dived into different kind of metadata standards that are suitable and helpful for learning analytics, uh, like XAPI and IMSLD, uh, IMS Calipper as well, and um, provided a specification for Europe to work with those um, standardizations to have a common language uh, on tracking of behavior of students. And then also data is important, very different data sets, also assessment data. So it's also very important to combine the different sources of data we have about the students within one system to get a full picture and get, get really meaningful learning analytics out of that. The fourth dimension is then technologies in the learning analytics framework. And technologies is really an <clears throat> going from education data mining over recommender systems, um, over visualizations uh, that we apply to, to uh, the data. And actually, that's a very rich aspect because, I mean, you can, you can apply whatever algorithm and you can modify any algorithm with certain minor configurations and you get different results. So the technology is for sure a very important one. And also the... Um, how the learners or the teachers perceive the information from the visualization back to them is a very important aspect. Then the fifth dimension, for us it's about constraints and it's legal and ethical constraints and that has been for sure a big topic in the last three years um, because whenever you came with learning analytics everybody raised the P word about privacy so there was really a showstopper for many things. Then the disaster with Inbloom happened in the US where these 100 million investment stopped because the privacy regulation was not done correctly. And within the LACE project, we worked hard on this topic in the last two years and a couple of workshops and finally published now uh, the delicate checklist and some other reports about how to do these ethics and privacy things in a good way. So to have really a way to implement what we call trusted learning analytics. So where also the students have ownership about their data, are aware about the data, are aware of what's going on with the data, and when the data is removed as well. And then the final dimension for us, the sixth dimension, is about competences. 
and competences, I think it's an underestimated uh, thing within learning and mixed field because we need to train, we need to train the teachers, we need to uh, inform parents if we implement it in schools, we need to have students that can react on the things they see there and we need to involve them in learning analytics support and instructional design to get really successful and well meaningful learning analytics and all have as a society can learn about the data and what's captured there. Policy for learning analytics is very important because um, we have a lot of concerns about learning analytics and that's for good reasons. So um, there need to be policies who has access to data, um, who, uh, what the contract between the student and the university is about the data aspect actually. Um, also the law really forces us to give a good reason and a good purpose what we're going to do with this kind of data. And we have good answers for those. So we want to use the data to improve the learning situation. We are not kind of surveillant system that wants to know everything just because of that. We want to improve learning and this needs to be nicely described. That needs to be um, understood by the stakeholders um, that could be students, teachers or managers. And <clears throat> we need to kind of sign that kind of contract between all the data subjects and the data clients to really improve that. And that requires policy making, policy making from the bottom up by understanding the importance of it and explaining the added value of learning analytics, but also from the top down by explaining um, yeah, and rolling out policies within the university to um, really take advantage of learning analytics on a broader scale. And within LACE, we are strongly worked on the ethics and privacy, as I said already, and believe that there are now really ways um, to implement learning analytics and roll it out in a secure way, in a protected way, and in a trusted way for, for all stakeholders. In about five years' time, learning analytics will have matured a lot. And the European Commission and also others invest a lot, and it's also kind of, it, it came beyond the awareness approach. So we see also with the LAC 2060 now as the highest registration rate ever. So a lot of pro national and other projects are starting up. And we are beyond the early adopter phase after five years now. So um, Learning analytics really goes fast now. There's a lot of things going on, uh, especially in the Netherlands. There's a lot of policy making with SURF and guidance with SURF. And I believe in 10 years' time, we don't talk that much about analytics anymore. It will be just a feature within our learning environments that we naturally use to improve our learning performance. And still we will develop it further and, and shape it and so on, but it will not be that hot topic anymore because it's kind of it's part of the environment, it's part of the things we, we're going to use. But until that, five to ten years time, a lot of communication needs to be done. A lot, of, a lot of communication is needed, bringing different stakeholders together, show them the added value, um, build up trust within the university and the people um, to achieve uh, trusted learning analytics, as we call it.